Tell me when. Oh, I'm sorry. Good. John Rahm, one under 69. John, a, a long birdie put on 18 with a fist pump. It feels like deja vu. Talk us through what you read there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, not really comparable. It's just more of a thank God I made a putt type deal. I um, feel like I played pretty good golf all day. I just, you know, saw a lot of them get close and not go in and to hit two wayward drives in the last two holes and somehow end up with two birdie putts and making the last one is, you know. It's more the fact that, you know, it's just making the putt to break par on the first run of the US Open. It's, you know, it's, it's quite a big deal. Is there anything you learned about the course today? Yeah, uh, it's very hard. <laughs> Dan? <laughs> uh, it, it's on, honestly, the first five holes when we had no win, I was thinking we're going to blow the roof off this place. I mean, somebody's going to shoot six, seven under if the wind doesn't pick up, right? Uh, and, and obviously, a well-designed golf course is always difficult, but when the crosswinds started to come in, it, it was tough. I mean, besides nine, I don't remember playing one hole without either straight right to left or straight left to right. It was never straight down win, and, that, and that's a challenge. You know, you have to really strike the ball well to put in those fairways, and uh, which I was able to do. I was never out of position out of the tee, except the last two holes. But uh, for 16 holes, I enjoyed the fairway. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go to Dan on the right. Uh, on 17, you, you, know, you hit the first one left and then the, the provisional left. Was there a moment there where you thought they were both gone, or how did you learn that one of them was safe? Uh, so when I hit the first one, I wasn't sure. And obviously, I, I, I thought there was a chance of it going left uh, into, into the, well, it's not really a penalty, it's just being gone. Um, I thought I saw somebody give me the safe sign, but I wasn't sure. So I was like, I'm not going to waste my time going up there to then come back. So I hit a driver, and while it was going left, we saw somebody give us the safe sign. So I kind of thought, well, if the second one's good, the first one's good for sure. Um, so that was it. I didn't really realize how close that came. I mean, uh, I fully know how lucky I got on that hole. And, you know, I try to take advantage to make a birdie, but I'll take the four and run every, any day of the week. And then you mentioned the golf course. Do you think that they can kind of turn it up quickly? Is it a, was it a function of playing they easy today to. because of the, uh, the pins? Or why did you think it, it played easy? Oh, there's no as wind. Well? No wind and relatively soft conditions early on, right? So you could hit it close and be aggressive. I'm talking about the first four or five holes, right? I mean, I was even par. Uh, both James and Colin were under par, and I think any of us were doing anything special. So I was like, you know, it could happen. Uh, but again, it's a U.S. Open, right? It's the false hope that that it gave me. Uh, <laughs> it's also, I mean, as the wind goes on, it gets firmer. This golf course can get really, really difficult. And, you know, it's the fun part of it. It's not the longest U.S. Open we've played. It's not the trickiest U.S. Open we've played. But with this wind and those grains, they can, you know, with pin positions, they can make it as hard as or, or as easy as they want. We're going to hear Doug. A couple of kids run off with your ball on 18. Yes, yeah, yeah. Somebody, I'm pretty sure I know who it was. Like I, re I recognized the two kids that were running the opposite way with a smile on their face. So <laughs> I am 100% sure I saw the two kids that, that stole it. I'm just curious, what when you when you got the, the drop from the TIO and everything, what, what kind of looked at the green did you have? What did um, you have? You know, I'm there? just really happy somebody um, spotted the ball first. Like, look, mm -hmm. we knew exactly where yeah. it was. And of the tee, I was comfortable. I was past all the trees. It was downwind, and that's why I kind of took, I wasn't trying to go that far left, but I was trying to take it almost over the trees and over the bunkers. Um, so after the free relief, I had 135 yards to the pin in an area where the rough wasn't that thick. Down. Okay. I don't think they expected anybody to hit it there or be around there. So I was able to drop on an area that was a little down grain and it wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't in, and jeopardy of carrying the bunker, right? That wasn't really a concern. So We're gonna go uh, to I think it was 125 to cover the bunker, so. Thank you. We'll go to Todd on your right. Hey, John, there were a couple of iron shots in your round that ended up short right. You looked perplexed. Was that mechanical or did you just misjudge the wind? What, did you, did you... No, that was 100% me. 100% you? That was about five iron shots that I skanked completely, yeah. <sighs> Nine, 10, 12, 15. I don't know if I'm missing one there. Uh, yeah, no, they were just bad swings. In, in a situation where they were all, in theory, good looks, right? Um, it, it's just bad swings, that's all I can tell you. Hey, are you able to, f do you know what you did wrong or is that something you're gonna try to figure out? 
today? I'm not too worried. A lot of times when you're in competition and you have all these crosswinds, I think a lot of it was a bit of indecision and, and doubt in my mind because we weren't exactly sure where the wind was coming from and not, not committing 100% of the time to the shot. And I think that was the difference. Um, that was more. I don't think it was really anything I need to look too far into. Okay. Uh, you know, we'll go right here to Dave. John, could you just speak uh, briefly about the, the pairing itself? All three of you played very solidly. Yeah. I mean, what can I say? We know what Colin does. Uh, pretty steady golfer. Um, is not the best ball striking I've ever seen him have, but he definitely had a lot of up and downs today that were really impressive. That kept the round going. Um, James, well, what to expect from a USM champion, right? Obviously, he's a very talented player, and he didn't have his best first uh, of best starting hole, but when you see somebody make a couple of par putts early on like he did, you know he's comfortable, right? So it's only a matter of time till the rest of the game kind of you know, gets going. So he, I mean, he shot one under, and I think he played the best out of the three of us. He definitely had a chance to shoot lower than, than both Colin and I. Thank you. John, thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it.